Welcome here to the Gamut Project. I'm here with uh, Ben, once again, all the way from Bristol. Ben, thanks for coming on board. Every time I see you, it looks like you're getting leaner, my friend. I am, yeah. I am getting leaner. Yes. Um, Good. You're looking uh, so much better. I mean, you can see your jaw lines coming out. Um, that looks yeah. good. I was pretty, uh, pretty bloated and inflamed when I started this three weeks ago. But I'm feeling tenfold. <laughs> Even with a couple of uh, minor blips along the way. Um, that's, I think that's what you wanted to discuss today, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Adherence. Adherence, yeah. I mean, um, it's more about... Um, the organization of things for instance i had a non-conformant meal on sunday night um gunny stop that sorry dog uh, and um I, I don't worry <laughs> yeah that's all right mate and uh it was down to mainly um doing overtime at work not having my meals prepped my uh, supplements prepped i went out to work at 6 a.m in the morning um with a plan in place, but when I got to work, I remembered, I, I realized I'd forgotten to take my supplements. Now, I'm the kind of personality where um, I know the supplements are kind of like the, the main thing is the diet, the supplements are there to supplement. Um, but as soon as I forgot that little, you know, detail, mm -hmm. um, it just like my head sort of went and I kind of just thought, oh, for crying out loud, like, how did you manage to get that? And it, it knocked me off track, at least for that day. And probably, and then the second day on Sunday, I had overtime again, and I forgot them again. Um, it's mainly because getting up at that time in the morning, I, I just don't, I'm not switched on at all. I mean, I'm fatigued. You know, it is an early time to get up for me. I work shift work. So it's uh, a bit all over the show. But, you know, I just forgot those things. Um, but I let it get to me and I let it, I let it ruin a few other parts of my, my routine, um, throughout those days. And then obviously afterwards, um, regretted it for what the hell, just, you know, stick, get back on track. And it always feels good just to get straight back on track, but it didn't happen those days. It had to happen on the Monday morning, which was, uh, frustrating. You know what? The, the the key is uh, not the key. Sorry, the most important point to remember in all of this is the fact that we are human, and the, the process with being human is that things are never going to be linear. So mm. although you can get things right for the most part, there is going to be a ten percent where things aren't going to go according to plan. Life's going to happen, and when life happens, it's very important to remember that it's not your entire life. It's merely a moment. And that moment doesn't have to dictate whether or not you get a result or not. It's whether or not you allow it to consume you to completely fall off the wagon for days to come. So yeah. let's talk about like what you had that was out of the ordinary. I mean, what, what was it that made you feel so bad that you ate that you shouldn't have eaten? I had, uh, you lived in England, fish and chips. Right. Okay. So I got home from that stressful day and my girlfriend said to me, oh, should we get some fish and chips? Oh, sorry, no, you can't because you're on this. And then I was just like, do you know what? Like, fuck it, let's just, let's just, pardon my French, let's just do it. Like, and then I just thought afterwards, like, what is wrong? Because like, my head was, uh, you know, up my ass, so to speak. Uh, you know, I let that, I let that frustration sort of ruin my momentum more than it could have done so we had we had some fish and chips which is uh, and i felt awful afterwards like felt not meant not even mentally like physically i just I felt sick like inflamed i just felt a bit gross and obviously mentally as well but you know um it's, it's so it, was the it was the reminder of what the process is that made me think, what the hell are you doing there? Get back on the wagon tomorrow morning, which was Monday morning. It, it, the way I felt was the reminder, you know, because I, I think I'm, I messaged you and said, straight back on it today. Like, and then I went out food shopping straight away. And, you know, and you were like, just to get prepped, just to get, because. This is the thing about the human, our psyche is sometimes, you know, when these little mishaps happen, I mean, it's not like you had fish and chips all day long. 
right? No. So let's just put it into an objective standpoint right now. You had a meal of fish and chips that wasn't on point. The other subsequent meals prior to having that fish and chips, they weren't unhealthy, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. uh, no, they weren't unhealthy. They were, conf they were conformant within uh, our food choices, but I forgot my meals, so I just had like extra Brazil nuts. I had like a load of them instead of a meat and vegetable dish because I just didn't have anything at work with me. Um, so they were conformant, but they just weren't, they weren't. Well, I, want you to take a, I just want you to take a step back and I want you to assess it from another standpoint. So instead of seeing everything that you did wrong in the situation, because you weren't necessarily being able to be present because you were tired, you were working shifts and you forgot, which is anybody can do that. Any human being that works around hours and that is overwhelmed by the pressure of those hours can forget. But instead of saying, you know, I forgot everything, I'm going to have McDonald's today, you opted to rather go for the healthiest option available. And that's very important to remember is the fact that you went for the healthiest option available. We don't always have the best option available to us, but there's always the healthier choice that we can yeah. choose what's in front of us and you chose that choice so you should applaud yourself on that the fact that you have those even if you have an overabundance of brazil nuts you know brazil nuts have far more nutrient density in them than a mcdonald's hamburger um, yeah or a pack of haribo or a mars bar mm -hmm. which you could have easily just eaten as instead of the brazil nuts but you chose yeah. not to you chose to have the brazil nuts so that is you need when we fall off of the regular Life is never going to be perfect, and our environment and the circumstances aren't going to be perfect every day. You'll have a, few, a good few days, but every once in a while, there will be a curveball thrown at you. And in these situations, instead of saying, oh, God, I can't have my broccoli and chicken breast and quinoa, whatever it is that you think you're going to have for that meal, and all that you have available are Brazil nuts in, or Haribo. <laughs> Those are Brazil nuts. <laughs> Because you know that eating the Brazil nuts is not going to have a detrimental effect on your body in comparison to the Haribo. Yeah. Okay. So you need to applaud yourself. Firstly, rather than coming down yourself and feeling bad, you couldn't do this and that. Understand your, your main priority in your life is not training. It is, a, it is an addition to your life that fulfills you. And gives you a happier life because it releases a lot of hormones and helps with detoxification and everything else but is in addition to your life it's not your life we all have to make a living and we all have to pay bills and have to live up to a responsibility in some way or some form in society's eyes which is what you did but unfortunately because of the nature of your work you forgot to take your meals with you but even though you forgot you still made an alternative strategy, given the scenario which you were in, to eat a healthier choice. And that's what makes all the difference in the long run. It's not always about being perfect, understand that. It's about being adaptable to the best possible outcome. Okay. Now, it's funny that you mentioned about the mindset and how you felt bad about it and how you got back on it. What I would like you to do, and it's gonna happen again, don't think that you're gonna be perfect. Because any client that tells me it'll be perfect from here on out, I know for a fact that that's not possible because life doesn't work that way. But I'm very, very proud of the fact that through a, a, part, a bar of the fish and chips that you had, which wasn't even that bad considering how well you've been doing up until that point, you chose a healthier option having Brazil nuts. So I'm very proud of that fact and you know, how well you did in that scenario. But understand, like, applauding yourself rather than coming down yourself, it's going to set up a psychological parameter for you to be able to sustain this for the rest of your life. Not for 12 weeks or six months or a year, but for the rest of your life because you're adaptable. Okay. If you are so regimented and so strict, which I see so often in the fitness industry, you know, a lot of fitness models and bodybuilders, they don't last. They don't last. They break. And when they break, they break to the complete opposite end of the polar spectrum. Okay. You don't want to go a complete 180 degrees away from where you are currently now. So yeah. understand like if things don't go accordingly, don't come down yourself. You've chose the best option possible, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. But your mindset 
we are all going to have points where we feel a bit down, feel a little bit discouraged, feel a little bit negative within ourselves. But there are certain things that we can encourage to pick ourselves up. And that comes through positive reinforcement of what you're capable of doing rather than negative compounding misery of what you're incapable of doing or reminding yourself what you can't do, what you aren't, what this is, the things that are lacking in your life. We all have things that we want more of our lives. Hence the reason why we progress as, as a species. Otherwise society would stand still, we have no technological advancement, so on and so forth. But it's very important to remember that when you, when you focus your energy toward the lack of, I mean, lack of what you're capable of doing because you feel so guilty about not doing this, doing that, you're only setting yourself up for a negative premise. And that's not going to be beneficial for your stress levels. It's not going to be beneficial for your sleep. And that's not going to help your training either, let alone other factors of your self-confidence. Look to the things that you did right. You chose a healthy option. Yes, you had one bad meal. Out of how many other meals prior to that bad meal were healthy? Mm, sure. How many meals? Give a number, Ben. How many meals were you eating that were healthy up to the fish and chips? Um, probably 60. I think I thought five meals a day, three meals a day, two snacks. Um, 10 days, 30, probably about 35 good meals. So you had one bad meal out of 35. Those are pretty damn good odds. Yeah, better than it was <laughs> before, we, <laughs> before I contacted you. So a nice thing about this uh, whole process is every morning you get to monitor and measure yourself and see how your body responded. And like the morning after having that, how was your glucose? Was it worse off than it had been? I think it was um, high, wasn't it? Monday morning. Um, yeah, I remember I came clean, didn't I, on, on, on message. Yeah. Was six? Was six? I'm not mistaken. I think it was six. six. Yeah, I think it was six. But and your yeah. HIV was also impaired. Say again. And your heart rate variability was also impaired. Yes. I, yeah, it was. They were bad readers. They were they were off um, like baseline readings. So instead of seeing that as a reprimand, see that as insightful because now you have the understanding of what to do to look forward for the next step, and you know that you can fix something nothing's ever really broken you can yeah. truly put things back together and if you put enough effort and looking at your heart rate variability your blood glucose which wasn't great on monday you ate healthier you did your recovery work which i recommend you do instead of training if you remember yeah, yeah. and what was what happened tuesday you went down to 4.8 yeah and yeah, your heart rate variability was, was optimal as well so don't worry about the short game like be aware and present to what your options are but understand one thing it's very very important those options aren't always going to be consistent no matter what your how good your intentions are because firstly you're human and secondly this world isn't necessarily set up for fitness models bodybuilders or healthy people and healthy people in general regardless if you're going to do the sport or not this world is set up for a chain of a conveyor belt, shall I say, to what people becoming uh, in a state, sorry, forming into a state of disease. Because when people aren't sick, but they are in a state of disease, I mean, they're not optimal, they're not functional, they're just, they're just getting through the day, but they're not optimally functional. Then medical companies make profits, then fast food companies make more sales because it helps them to feel better in that moment. Soda companies make more sales because sugar is purchased, to help them feel better because they feel shit. So understand that the world we live in is not geared toward our most optimal mm -hmm. health. It is geared to the most amount of profit that corporations can make in our state of disease. All right. Now, when you understand that, you also understand the fact that you don't have to succumb to these temptations because there's always going to be a healthier option available. It may not be the best option, but it'll always be a healthier option available, as you saw now in opting to have Brazil nuts instead of a Mars bar, which you could have done. Yeah, easily. So the mindset is don't be so critical on the 5%. Everyone is so worried about the 5% and being going all out when it comes to the training when it comes to the deprivation of their diets, 
when it comes to deprivation of their lifestyle outside of the gym. Very important. And I, I unfortunately learned the very hard way that lifestyle is balanced with good family time, good time with friends, good amount of work time or overworking, and a good time in the gym provides far more of a return on its investment. Unfortunately, you know, through every lesson comes a little bit of pain, but that lesson was nothing less learned. So what we can do is life's always going to present challenges and lessons to us. And in this lesson that you were presented with on the weekend, it gave you an option to either think, you know what? I did bad. I was a bad boy. Right? I was a bad guy because I didn't do this. Or, you know what? I was in a situation where there weren't many options available, but I chose the healthiest one. I did damn good. I just think about that for a second. And how does that change in this moment, which we're talking about right now, how does that change the perception of yourself, given what I'm saying? Feels good because I was I would have previously kicking myself that I weren't organized. In a way, I felt a bit suffocated because I know I've been trying hard and still failed. So I kind of just felt like, oh, God, like. You didn't fail. Oh, Wait, yeah. This is what you're wrong. You didn't fail. You didn't fail. Yeah. You That's actually, right. So if I look at it that way, then um, it feels refreshing. I feel a bit more like, you know, going forward, wow. I feel a bit more relieved. Wow. Mate, you finished. should be smiling. You should be smiling yeah. because you succeeded in a challenge, yeah. a life's challenge. Right now, you know what? It's easy to take a program that I give you and go to a gym knowing what that plan of action is going to be. It's far harder going into a scenario which you didn't anticipate and making the right choices. And it's what yeah. you did. You should be smiling and you should be happy about that in yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. You, tr you, you proved yourself to be a strong human being, which is very difficult in this world because there's temptation everywhere now, more so than ever in our history. So you rose to that challenge and you made the right choice in that type of commitment. Yeah, thanks. No, no, it does help because... You know, I, I am, I am quite, a, I respond to regiment and um, I, enjoy, I enjoy it in a way because when I've prepped before, you know, been on um, certain, I've never stepped on stage, but I've certainly done like things that would mimic, like a prep that would mim mimic that kind of process. You'll be stepping on stage uh, next year. I'm so yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be great. I do enjoy, I do enjoy that re regiment and I respond to it. And I, but I, I, I think I'd probably kick myself too hard when I have a hiccup. And, um, it does it because you know you're trying so hard and then I still have that hiccup because I've forgotten or something like that or you know just um I kind of like implode a little bit like and let that let that hiccup become like a big bump in the road as opposed to just you know letting it just be one meal one instance and then crack on and then in it, that that one instance will become a day but if you put it like how you said Okay, you know, I've, 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 I've made a mistake, let's, you know, I commend myself that I've, I've had a contingency or, or I responded um, in the least damaging way possible. Um, yeah, maybe that's, that's something to be a boost, not, not, a, um, not the opposite. And Ben, don't be under any illusion. You know, I have my days, um, you know, when I'm out with friends and I'm enjoying myself and I have an ice cream. Um, I had an ice cream three. I'm on the same gut protocol you guys are on, and ice cream's not allowed. You know, mm -hmm. berries not allowed. But I had an ice cream. Um, I knew I shouldn't have had it, but in that moment, everybody else was having it. We were being sociable, and I kind of just wanted to be a, a little bit of human with my friends for that. Mm -hmm. Just one. That's that one ice cream. I, but I enjoyed that ice cream. Yeah, I, I knew it wasn't perfect, but it wasn't. I didn't go for the biggest serving. I went for a small serving. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I made sure an hour later I had a meal dense with good fats, lots of vegetables and good protein, and I drank lots of water. No one is perfect. Okay? No one gets it right every single meal at a time. And those that do, do it for a very short span of their life. You can do it for three months, four months. But generally, those who are so fixated on the 5% that they go 110% end up going 180 degrees in the opposite direction once it's time to breathe. 
Now, I don't want you to get to a point once you've competed that you go 180 degrees. I would like for you after your show to say, you know what? I'm going to have a pizza or I'm going to have some fish and chips. And then after you've had that meal, say, you know what? That was enough. Yeah. I'm good. I'm going to have something healthy now. And then keep a balance. Because the worst thing that you can do for yourself through this whole experience is think that of this as a regimen. All right? Nutrition is a better word than diet. Because diet, you take the T away, it says die. There's a negative under connotation to it. I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> <laughs> nutrients that provide the body with wholesome sensation that provide your body with fuel to feel better and to move better yeah. think of your body as a machine that absorbs nutrients not a body that should die or be deprived which is not far off of dying <laughs> all right you don't have to deprive yourself you shouldn't feel like you're starving you shouldn't feel so hungry you want to gnaw your fingers off. No. If there isn't an isn't a optimal option available, choose the healthiest option. And if you are going to have something that's not um, conducive with a diet plan or as a non-compliant meal, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy that meal. Don't let that meal become your entire day. Don't let that meal eventually enjoy you. All right. So that's, that's a very, very important stakeholder. to remember. Hey, hey, boy. <laughs> he's going to get into this one. Yeah, she's trying to get involved. But... Lovely. Oh, she's so beautiful then. It's a husky. Mm. Yeah, a husky, mate. Yeah. Oh, they're such that, one there, that one there as well. They're mm -hmm. such good dogs. They're yeah, lovely. they're lovely. Quite hard, quite hard work, but yeah, lovely. Lovely uh, company and uh, you know, affectionate. No. Very warm. Very warm. So don't get stuck in the moment. You must remember we have to acknowledge our history, but we don't have to live through it. All right. So don't live through that. I didn't do this, I didn't do that. Say, you know what? I didn't do it. It wasn't perfect. But like in your case, I made the best choice possible. When you say, even if you didn't make the best choice possible, say, I'm not going to continue to make that choice because I don't, I don't feel good in that choice. No. So yeah. remember the sensation. We all, we're blessed with senses. And these senses are our subconscious You're talking to us, saying to us, do something or don't do something. And if we calm ourselves down enough, that voice becomes so much more pronounced. So when you become more pronounced and you eat something you shouldn't have, or you drink some alcohol and drink too much alcohol and you have a hangover, um, or whatever it might be, and you just listen to that voice. You can stay calm and listen to it a little bit, just for a while, slow everything down. And don't be so on the money all the time. Don't be like, I gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this. Hey, you know what? I don't have to do this. I have to do this right now, gotta be with me. And then you can, you can feel what it's causing to your body. And that will be power enough for you not to want to do it again. And every time you don't do it, 35 times later, you end up looking better feeling better, training better, enjoying life more, and inevitably being happier. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to compliance, you know, I don't really like that word compliance because people always take it to the extreme. You know, if you don't do something, you're a bad person because you're not compliant. I, I feel like the best way to approach nutrition and training is with an objective standpoint. And there's no more of an objective standpoint than measuring how your sugar responds, your blood sugar responds to the environment, and how your nervous system responds to your environment too. And if you just, that's why in the morning, that's why I get you guys to do this in the morning. Apart from the fact I need to be semi-fasted, I'd make you guys do it first thing when you wake up. You know what the reason is for that, Ben? No, go on. Self-awareness. Mm. In this world we live in, we're so engrossed with everything else that's going on around us. And there's so much chaos, more from social media that we can get on our phones. And this, I put my thumbprint there, boom, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
emails, WhatsApps. Right now, I've got WhatsApps, see? We're so bombarded with everything else around us apart from ourselves. So in essence, we become so isolated because we don't know who we are anymore because we don't give ourselves the time of day. So by measuring your glucose and your heart rate variable in the morning, it might seem trivial, but on a subconscious level, it gives you time to connect where you are. Who are you today? Are you a person that's inflamed? Are you a person that's stressed? Are you a person that may not be able to handle your nutrients and break them down effectively? Or are you a calmer person that's gonna have a good training session today? Or are you a stressed person that should do some stretching today instead? It gives you that awareness. And self-awareness is so powerful because it makes you just enjoy life that much more. And you realize that everything is not imperative. There isn't a rush. The only rush in life is the rush that we create for ourselves. Um, and that comes down to like feeling the pressure, like not getting diet planning, not eating every three hours, not getting the supplements with it. You know what? If you don't get the supplements every single time, guess what? It's not going to make that massive a difference. If you don't get your supplements in for a week, maybe then you'll see some, some like a little bit of a distorted uh, result. But if you're not going to get it for two days, or three days, and you get it in again, you go back into your routine, you know what? You're not going to have a detrimental effect. Unless you on prescribed medication for a particular type of disease. Obviously, that's a different story. But for the purpose of functional health, this needs to be most functional of them all. And it's the hardest muscle, even though it's not a muscle, it's made of fat, um, to train and to condition. And in order for us to condition our minds, it's very important that we need to install a great sense of self-esteem. And in this world, our self-esteem is broken down into wanting things that we don't actually really want or need. And we forget about that. So we end up buying leggings because everyone else is buying leggings, even though we didn't like leggings 10 years ago. Like I hated leggings. I don't have leggings, I didn't buy, I didn't conform. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my friends also hate them and I'll see them wearing leggings when they're training in the gym because everyone else is wearing leggings, right? Yeah. Or to buy the fancy car uh, that costs you 30,000 pounds. But then every time you have to pay that car at the end of the month, it's a hindrance in your life rather than a blessing. So instead of living up to everyone else's expectation, become associated with who you are and what you have done rather than what you have not done. Okay. That's the only route, route not only to staying healed, from, to, from healing, but also sustaining the state of being healed. You must remember, beauty needs maintenance. I love that saying, beauty is maintenance. And I'm not just talking about beauty, although maybe I'm not the most prettiest of men, but I'm not just talking about beauty, I'm also talking about beauty. Okay, we can easily shift to being, being, excuse my French, assholes from being nice guys. I know many times in my life, I've gone from one end to the other extreme because I was, when I was focused on this rather than this. But when you allow this to ease, no matter what comes your way, whether it be someone that loves you or someone that can't stand you, you're confident and comfortable in yourself. And it's not, it's not an issue or mission anymore. Okay. Thank you, mate. That is uh, valuable, especially for someone like me, more than you, uh, more than you think, you know? And we're all, we're, we're, we all have our struggles in life and it's only a pleasure to be able to be a part of the community. And what we are creating is a community of people that aren't judgmental, because I'm not. Like, I have clients of mine telling me the deepest, darkest things that they get up to, and I, cons I construct a plan for them to recover from that. I don't tell them they're bad, and they're not gonna get a result, this and that. They already know that, they already know that. There's no point in me emphasizing that, the guilt, because the only thing that's gonna happen from guilt is more guilt's gonna come, from further bad action. It's the same thing with a person that's overweight. The person that's overweight and uses comfort eating to feel better will eat, will get more overweight, be depressed, and start eating to comfort themselves the fact they don't feel confident in themselves. 
and that vicious cycle continues, continues, continues. The only way in which we can progress forward is to say, you know what, objectively, what has happened? Why has it happened? What are the good points? What are the bad points? And what can we do differently? Not you're a bad guy because you did this, you did that. We all feel, we don't, we don't need people to tell us we're bad or we're good. We, we already we inherently feel, sorry, have an action to, sorry, have a feeling to our actions when we know we've done something good or done something bad. No one needs to tell us that, right? This is, if, unless you're a complete psychopath, you don't need to be told that you know. But mm. the way in which we can be better in ourselves is to have not judgment, but rather constructive and objective strategy toward being better human beings. And I know we've drifted off of adherence, but adherence, like I said, adherence, it just has a negative, has a, it has a tone of pressure to it, adherence. It does, you yeah. say it, adherence. Try and say adherence in a nice way. You can say <laughs> love. If you say love, acceptance, acceptance, adherence. Adherence, adherence. It still sounds terrible, right? I don't like that word because in my opinion, given what you've just told me, you have been an amazing human being to overcome a choice that was presented in front of you that could have gone either way. And the more choices you make, that are the subtle changes and acknowledge yourself in making those small choices, not just letting them go by and focusing on the negative, the more empowered you will become to what eating healthy on a more regular basis, training more often, having a good life with your family, all these things can come about. Yeah. We all go through pain for a reason so that we can open our understanding to it. It's not a bad thing to go through things so long as you can have a, a learning from the experience. Just, you know, yeah, it's a confidence booster just just hearing that that opinion and that uh, that way of looking at it, and you kind of feel a bit less uh, less suffocated, less pressure to adhere, um, and more more enjoy it and really remember the benefits of appreciate the benefits of why I'm doing this and what we're doing. Yeah, just become more aware of yourself. That's all. Yeah. Um, and be aware of your, like, like I went to the gym today and I trained for like 20 minutes. Just did a quick, nice 20 minute session because I felt like my HRV was perfect, blood glucose was great, but I felt to myself, you know what, I don't want to do more than this today because I feel like the day yesterday, I, I pushed it a little bit too much. So I thought, you know, today I'm just going to concentrate on contraction, a little bit less weight, and I'm going to just enjoy, enjoy. Yeah. So I said, oh, when you, why aren't you coming tomorrow? I said, I'm going to tomorrow, I'm resting tomorrow. Oh, why don't you train tomorrow? I'm like, because I don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to. You, uh, yeah. it's, you can get to that result when you realize that this is not forced. This is um, a choice. When you realize you have choices in life, you realize you have the power. And when you have the power, you don't feel suffocated or pressured into, um, or trapped. Mm. You don't. So, I hope that helped. Yeah, it does. It does. Great. Smile, Ben. You did well. <laughs> you did extremely well. You did, you did really well. well. Yeah, you overcame a life challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, that's awesome. Thanks. You know. Right. I'm very proud. Um, we'll catch up next week for another, yeah. another call. Uh, think about what you'd like to discuss for our viewers uh, listening in. Um, I think today was very insightful. Uh, so really grateful for the question that you provided me. And um, I will we'll chat to you tomorrow once you yeah. see the meetings. Yeah, will do. All right. You guys are now finished the second week, right? This is the sec end of the second week? Yeah. All right. So we've got another two weeks to go. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have you guys take a two day break, complete rest. And then we're going to start with a more bespoke um, gamma project once you've done the initial detox. All right. So things will be a little bit more altered in intensities and volumes for you guys.
It's been a pleasure. Well, I look forward. Thank you. Cheers, Justin. Only my pleasure. Thank you, Ben. Take care.